So I'm a VTuber, right? Name's Demo, by the way. Stop giving them that look, Demo. You're scaring at least half of them. So there's a VTuber called Mario Yume. So since I am being a VTuber, I might as well learn the dark truth about VTubing. It might delve into the parasocial relationships that even fly tried to go into my mouth. It might delve into the parasocial relationships that plague all creators at some point or another. Mostly women. But hey, I'm not a woman, so yeah. But oh well, this is a thought experiment in all cases. This video is by Mari, and you can go and subscribe to her if you want to. Might as well just press this like button, you know. Full screen, yes! There we go. Now let's react! People who use VTubing as a means to escape from reality don't understand that being on the internet in and of itself is far from escaping reality. It's a cesspool of humanity magnified to its most potent toxic form, Lamo. Good luck keeping that. up with that delusion though. Crying and laugh emoji. Do you think that's true? That the Half. internet is just a magnification of reality? Wait, hold on. So, I think that's half true? I think humanity in and of itself is the same way that they act online, like on Twitter. If you remove the ability to get punched in the face, or have a relationship that you actually have going sour, you're gonna be more of yourself in that instance. As well, the same thing happens when people get drunk or with drugs. Yeah, their inhibitions are lowered. People act good because of their inhibitions. That's a psychological standpoint. So the internet, in my perspective immediately, is that they're just being themselves. It's not a magnification of humanity. It is a light, a beacon shining on the person, the soul that is typing and or speaking. You're brave if nobody knows your face. But the moment you start saying something in a crowd of people, unless you're really, really intrepid and or stupid or ignorant, I don't know, you might have an issue and you probably won't say the same thing. You can also tell me in the comments whether in what points you agree with me or agree with any other ideas, your own perspective of the matter, and go ahead, have a discussion in the comments. Or is the internet something entirely different? What does it mean to escape from reality? And how is VTubing tied to that concept? Is there any truth to this statement? Or is VTubing all just a lie? Let's see what some other no. VTweeters had to say about this. VTubers who have a whole platform but completely refuse to engage with any social issues bother me so much. Like what? we are directly engaging in society already by being an influencer. Hiding behind a screen doesn't change the fact that we are all human at the end of the day looking for an escape uh, from society while actively pursuing a status of influence in said society is silly it's literally a vtuber's job to engage at people but no it's my mental health i am allowed to step away and curate my experiences i would never shame someone for not speaking on an issue we do not know the lives of vtubers behind the scenes why would i judge someone for protecting their mental health i find it amusing when i see people oh. pretending to be anime characters arguing over this concept of reality versus fiction on an app that used to be called twitter because well they're on Twitter. Yeah, the People irony is there. To escape reality, not be reminded of it. What? Escape reality? Y you don't come to the internet just to escape from reality. Sometimes you actually find things about reality that you're not being told in the real world. The internet has a reality to it. It is intricately designed to be human because it is a human invention. Our minds are intricate. Like, imagine daydreamers. Daydreamers escape reality by just sitting there, doing nothing. What am I thinking now? Too late, it was a Tyrannosaurus baking a pineapple. Ha! But that's, that, that's the point, isn't it? Internet is a tool, not a place. Your, your place on the internet is a concept, not a reality. But the place that you're at with people incongruent with other people is not a place on the interwebs. It is a place within the heart and mind of the people you are around. Whether you agree with them, whether you disagree with them, whether they hate you or love you, or are entirely indifferent, that's where you are. As long as they recognize you, I guess. But even if they don't recognize you, that's still a statement. That's still a relationship. It's just an absence of a relationship, which is technically still a relationship. <laughs> Especially if you're like one of those stereotypical couples that are really old, that the, mo uh, the mother and father doesn't acknowledge either side of the issues. Kind of strange how that works, right? 
I could not be farther from the truth. Is yeah, this why I, I never talk about personal stuff? I have a network of awesome people, but the worst scumbags always find my post. I'd rather get shit on stand up for uh, my friends and others. I don't even wait. Private hold on. Wait. Hold on. Truth. Is this why I never talk about personal? Uh, okay. This is why I personally never talk about personal stuff. I have a network of awesome people, but the worst scumbags always find my posts. I'd rather get crapped on standing up for my friends and others. I don't need my private life to be ammo for them too. Okay, do not harass anyone. That's pretty self-explanatory. Stuff. I have a network of awesome people, but the worst scumbags always find my post. I know she's reading it, but I, I wanted it full context of this. Looking for an escape from society while actively pursuing a status of influence is said society is silly. Well, not if said society is silly, <laughs> you know? It's literally a VTuber's job to engage with people. Because society is silly, but there, there are pockets of society which are not silly and that are actually good. And there are some that are actually evil. Hence, why a good number of uh, very bad nations, yeah, like the <laughs> Third Reich regime or communism in and of itself. The, the, I don't know, those are pretty bad societies, but they're still a society. That is a society of people. It is a culture. And then you have to define culture versus society versus civilization. But that gets way too complicated. I'd rather get on stand up for uh, my friends and others. I don't need my private life to be ammo for them too. If VTubers actually took a moment to talk about real life social issues, you know, basically breaking the fourth wall of their universe, then is tweeting about it on X Twitter really going to change anything? Especially if you just got off know. of work or coming home from school and you had a really long day and all you want to do is just relax and see what your favorite content creator is up to. <laughs> Baby, wake up. It's time for people to only read the first sentence in Misa's newest post and not read any supplementary context given directly in their replies before getting mad at her again. Like, Imagine um. watching an episode of Naruto and right before Naruto goes to fight Sasuke for like the 100th time, he suddenly just stops moving, turns to the camera and says something like, so uh, what you gonna do about the present election that's coming up? You immediately turn that sh right? Because that's so well, weird. Probably. Believe Naruto would say something so jarring. That's just a funny little example that I think of when I see this entire argument happening. And this argument has been going on for a few days now. On well, I remember a time when Markiplier did something similar and all of the content creators did something similar and I personally didn't like it. I have to scroll through three years of content. The only reason why I bring this up is because I found it really uncouth, I should say. Where are you at? Where, where are you at? Where, 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 where are you at? Well, that, that's where he's talking about the coronavirus. That's, maybe it's up here. It'd be after that because it was really silly. The problem we need to confront. This was the whole thing. Okay, I'm getting political here. Political political warning up there. If you want to stick around, to jump to this timeline of the video. If you don't want to stick around. Content warning. So you go here. Today I'm going to be talking about a very serious subject that you probably already know about. A few days ago, a man by the name of George Floyd was murdered by a police officer. Okay, so we're immediately going this far. This I found to be a little bit intellectually dishonest. Because one, this is Markiplier. But notice also the likes and dislike ratios. He has a brand, and it's usually mostly video games and fun, kooky stuff. The moment he touches on a serious topic, a lot of people, if the uh, topic is agreeable enough, will like that he made the video. The only thing is, this was before we knew exactly what happened. And the mass media doesn't really say much about what actually happened. So it might have not actually been. No, no, hold on. And I have to formulate my words correctly because, yeah, it might accidentally look like I'm defending something, which I am not. Now, coming from Markiplier, this whole thing about George Floyd would have been off kilter because, you know, everybody was doing the whole black screen thing. And I was like, what are you doing? Why are you supporting BLM specifically? Because that's not how this, in anything like this works. His brand is not this. If it was that, nobody would bat an eye. Cons a la Tim Pool, right? Or the Young Turfs or something like that. So... 
So when it comes to branding specifically, you have to, you have to consider what your content is and who your community is. And if your community is capable of actually being able to take what you give them. Like sometimes in my gaming, I actually make political jokes. Like there is a game that was like something like a balloon blowing up. It's like, like really, really past its limit. I made the joke about, wow, that Biden hot air is really good at inflating stuff, isn't it? Or something like that. I don't remember exactly how I said it. It corrupt. It was a file that was corrupted at one point, so I couldn't upload it. Anyway, it was funny to me. Is your community filled with people who are, you know, oblivious to the reality of the day and age? Or are they actually hard workers? Or are they people who want to come to the internet to learn from their favorite creator? I mean, there are history channels all over the place. You don't see them not talking about hard-hitting stuff because history is hard-hitting. The same with religion, religious debates. Those things are hard-hitting and everything like that. You have to also consider the amounts of crap you get from people who are not your community. You just have to roll with the punches. You, you can't just sit down and think that, oh, I am one genre of person and I make one genre of content. There, you have to blend content good in order to actually stand out from the crowd. Now, like me, I am on Demos Axiom Archives. You are watching a Demos Axiom Archives video right now. If you want to subscribe, hey, we talk about philosophy here, which sometimes divulges into directly political philosophy, sometimes into religious philosophy, because I am a religious nut. How are you? But I'm not an apologist. So even though I know a lot, it's kind of hard to teach because a lot of people don't agree with me what the Bible actually teaches. And also it feels like even if I say it, they're not going to understand what I'm saying because without that context of the culture that was surrounding the writing of those writings, you're not going to know if I'm telling you a lie or telling you the truth. But yeah, I'm bringing this back around. That applies to the internet as well. Today, especially today, <laughs> in this day and age, time and trends go by so fast. They're talking lingo that I have no idea about. Like, legitimately. I, for I keep forgetting lingo. The only one I recently remember is bruh. And sometimes I just say bruh a lot. Sometimes I say sis. But then other pe and then people get confused like, well, what are you talking about cisgendered people for? It's like, what? I didn't say that. Short for sister. Ugh. So would it be bad if one of your favorite YouTubers or favorite series or favorite things to break the fourth wall, considering if they are that type of medium or a direct parody like South Park? How many times do parody anime break the fourth wall? They don't just break the fourth wall. They break the entire house down. It's called being self-aware. You have to consider if your brand is being self-aware about your content that you create or not. Like, my mission on this channel is to help people have a better understanding with people who they disagree with. Because there will be videos where I will delve into a topic, sometimes serious, sometimes not, and I will look at all, every single argument I can find. There are some things that I've gotten written that have 14,000 words in it. Bruh! I mean, sis! Not cisgender. You have to admit. It depends entirely what your brand is. Well, anyway, let, let's keep going. Let me erase. Full screen. Full screen. Let's go. On Twitter slash X dot com. I'm here to spread smiles. Our world sucks. Is on fire and out of our control. Being joyful and spreading happiness is the part I play, however small, and making a difference. If I can help one person, even just one, feel happy, I've done my part. My bad. Gee, I forgot the VTubers are just animated dolls and chatters are just words on a screen. Nothing to see here. Like, people what? are really arguing over the idea that VTubing is not real. And as a VTuber, you should be using your influence to talk about real life issues because being on the internet means you're engaging in real life issues all the time. And that's just what? kind of bizarre. I'm of a similar mindset myself, but I won't speak about everything as I do try to strongly balance having a space of comfort that allows for stepping back. I also refuse to just gloss over everything entirely, most especially about topics that directly affect me as a person. And see, that's the ultimate point. How many people do you see that are actually engaging with reality, but also engaging with uh, media? I mean, you would have to have like separate rooms in order to do that, right? 
That's why people create different channels on YouTube. Like me, this is Demos Axiom Archives. Over on Rejoice Box Gaming, there is a gaming channel, right? I don't talk about heavy topics like that there. What I do talk about there is my stupid reactions to games that nobody watches. <laughs> but I do it anyway, just because I love doing it, okay? Sometimes I make political jokes. Sometimes I make edgy jokes. Sometimes I make really wholesome jokes. Sometimes I'm just the joke, and I don't even have to say anything. <laughs> like my gaming skills as they evaporate into the air before your very eyes. <laughs> and I don't want to watch YouTube and politics all the time. It's just that when YouTube recommends something, I have this issue where it's like, oh yes, I just simply searched for the Trinity. You know, based on like, uh, religion and stuff. And the only thing I ever got for two months straight was, this video has the Trinity in it in its title, and its description, and its tags, and everything else. You want to watch it, don't you? I'm sorry, what? I don't want to watch that. I already know about the Trinity. I already know about all the arguments. Just because I watched one three-hour long video about it doesn't mean I want to watch another. Oh, what is that? You don't want to watch this? Well, why didn't you say so by not clicking on that video? Now we don't know what to recommend you. I don't know. Actually be an actual social media company? Perhaps, methinks... That would be a good idea. That also puts into my mind a consideration that I haven't thought about other people's experiences about using the internet. Because when you consider that, like someone on YouTube would not have the same experiences as someone on Twitter or TikTok who were just there, right? They wouldn't have the same experience as a Redditor. They wouldn't have the same experiences as a, I'm trying to think, Facebooker or Meta, meta -er, er, Meter. They also wouldn't have the same experience as someone on Grinder. Now, that's plainly obvious, but each individual sect of the internet has its own different culture. At the end of the day, you are 100% in your right to step back and take the time and space you need to take a breather from what reality is dishing you. In fact, that's very important for your mental and physical health. Life is a marathon, Agreed. not a sprint, and railing at problems. 24-7 is the fastest way to destroying yourself and affecting those around you. But on the same exact token, ignoring everything entirely to the point of toxic positivity is also very self-destructive and destructive to those around you, affected by you. Keeping Agreed. a good balance can often be hard, especially in times where you're hit the hardest and it appears to go on for ages but it's not good to fall into the mindset of oh if i don't look at it don't think about it don't talk about it everything is fine because that's not true stuff Agreed. does not just stop or go away by ignoring it in fact there are many things that can and will get worse if we all just collectively ignore it and avoid it most especially in this community where manipulation and dangerous behavior run rampant due to anti-drama stances Ooh. in the end tailor your community and spaces as you like but there is absolutely something to be said if you refuse to touch on important topics under the belief that it's good for you or helping others, as all it is is sweeping problems under a rug for the explosion later. Nah, you had me up until that point. So Demo told me he made a bad argument. <sighs> now he wants me to say it. But that also means the poster still has Demo wrapped around their argument in agreement. So there's that, I guess. A VTuber can either be described as virtual, in the sense of digital manifestations of reality, or parallel to reality while not being solely reality, but can be based on our lived reality as piggybacking. What someone needs to do is decide if their VTuber is a caricature of themselves or a character they roleplay. If it is a caricature of themselves, then they can say whatever they want because the community is there for their reality and content, as shown in their humor, work ethic, and even tone of voice. If it is a character they roleplay, then we're talking about them acting in ways they would not normally act. Just because it's a character with a different backstory than yours does not mean you can't retrofit your personality to that character. An intricate balance is always palpable, however. Maybe focus on being yourself and avoid other people praising or rebuking you into being something you're not. That's shame. And being honest is nothing to be ashamed of. Just say it tactfully and you're golden. Now where's my red velvet cookie demo? Unless the culture itself breeds evil people and allows evil to run amok. Some communists are good because the family unit is a socialist style system. The only thing is, it doesn't scale up into big government. And those are my ideas. You might have a different idea. Ultimately, we can disagree, but if I say this and you're incapable of saying that you simply disagree, 
and you get really, really angry for some reason, based on my opinions? I don't know. Because people don't know how to human, I guess? You, you fall into this issue where it's this tribe versus this tribe. Tribal warfare, as it were. Based on ideology rather than nationality like it was back in the olden days. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, why are you stereotyping? And you can't really tell other people what content to digest. Because if you do that, you're only going to push them into content that is not yours. So you can watch whatever you want to. You can watch a San Piker, whom I do not like, not in the slightest. Mmm. Scumbag incarnate. Or you can watch Asmongold, which I... I watch relatively sometimes. You can watch Tim Pool. You can watch Trump. You can watch uh, Bernie Sanders. I don't know. Uh, Richard Spencer. It might be Robert Spencer. I'm I'm getting confused. One of them is a white supremacist person, and then another one is a debater or an apologist. Ultimately, I don't care. Perspective is all that you have right now. In culture, perspective is everything. If you are able to see another side for what it is and humanize your enemies, because you know that you're humans, if you dehumanize a human, you're inhuman, right? You should not dehumanize others. Let them do it themselves based on their actions. If you dig up dirt, it's your hands that are dirty. You gain your existence based on how you treat other people. That's my perspective. And that's what I'm going to teach on this channel. Ooh, mommy. I'm gonna be a little fall there. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is a good take. This is a much more tactful take on this whole situation. Yeah, very thought Thank out. You, Leah. I just Leah disagree by the ending. It. That we already established was a bad take, you idiot. I cultivated a toxic positivity space in my community by not speaking about things when after posting about my dangerous health issues, I got three separate DMs telling me I'd essentially harsh their vibe and they weren't there for negativity. Oh, no. No, now I feel sorry. Now I understand the ending. I, I feel very bad. I feel very bad. Oh no. What What are people? Are these people real? I hate, I hate people like that. I don't like saying I hate people. What am I talking about? I hate myself more than I hate anyone else. <laughs> hey, I can laugh at it. Don't worry. I'm mentally stable. Simply because I'm not bullied that easily. <laughs> you can call me evil or whatever you want to. I'll probably agree unless it's something like really, really heinous. And then I'll say, hey, you're worse. <laughs> it doesn't have to be true. I can say whatever I want. Words have power. Words have meaning. You can do anything with your words, except tell people to move. Because they do that on their own volition. But seriously, if you have mental health issues and you're talk you have a a place where you're talking about it, I don't think you should feel guilty at all talking about your issues. Because you are your brand. Literally. If you are a personality that is kind of like an actor in a play or a movie. It, it, it falls into this weird line where there are people who watch a villain on screen and they do such a fantastic job and then the actor in their mind is just evil. Decide in their brain that that actor is a morally corrupt human being. Those people don't deserve to have a phone. They need their parents to take away their phone rights, their computer rights. And they need to go out and not only touch grass, but possibly go to a farm. Don't buy the farm, because that's a that's a euphemism for something else. And I would never want anyone to do that. But go to a farm and just be a cow for a day. Just be a cow. I don't mean shove tons and tons of sugary sweets into your mouth. I'm talking like, actually act like a cow. Be with the cows. If you sing them music, preferably something like, like a guitar, like... Or a, a like something melodic. They'll agree with you, and they'll come to you, and they'll listen, because cows actually like music. It's really cool to watch. Anyway. I'll never tell anyone not to do what they need to to make themselves feel better in regards to stuff, but I really don't know how to explain how demoralizing that was and how subhuman I felt after that, right after learning that there's a real chance I could die. Wait, what was that? Maybe this can be a topic for a future video. Toxic positivity. Let me know in the comments. Yes, I agree. Toxic positivity is a little selfish. Oh no, you're making me feel bad. You're the evil person. You're just selfish for yourself. I I'm sorry, that, that that's what narcissists say? I'm sorry. Now, I might be not sorry, but I say I'm sorry a lot. If you know I'm sorry, you will know I'm sorry. 
but I can also be sorry for you acting like a little bitch, okay? A little B-word. A little hunky-dory person who needs to get kicked in the booty to shunt their head out of their rear end. Or get it kicked farther up, and so all of your relationships just evaporate into nothing, and you can't really have a life because you treat everyone like utter garbage and crap, and that's why your life sucks. That's not our fault, but that's the ultimate dichotomy of creator versus viewer, right? Because creators don't know your life. I barely know my own. I can barely handle my own, but I do handle it, but I'm not selfish about it. I mean, there are issues like trauma dumping, which I can definitely go into trauma dumps all the time if you let me, but I will not let myself. Even if, even if all of the things I say actually help someone understand that they are worthy and they might not have it as bad as I did or do because trauma dumping is not good unless it's a mutual agreement. Unless it's something like serious, like die from this. Like death, that's very bad. You do not want to play around with death. I know, I've been there. I have PTSD for a reason, bruh. And cis, not cisgender. And I'm fairly certain that if someone was actively dying, I'm sure their community would be very, very heartbroken about it, but understanding. Those who are not understanding, well, I think that comes into uh, how well your community can police itself. Surprising that was and how subhuman I felt after that, right after learning that there's a real chance I could die from this. Well, well, uh, you're probably not watching, Leah, but hey, I gotta say, you, you're not subhuman. Not for feeling that way. Not for doing what you did. It was understandable. You did nothing wrong. Literally did nothing wrong. It's just narcissists are out there in a community. Creating toxic positivity is also a little bit strange because that that's not really your control. Like, how do you counterbalance toxic positivity? Positivity when you just want to bring smiles and you want to be, like, a, a welcoming figure to any and all political spectrums, any and all places, any and all people who speak different languages and understand your current one either well or not well. Hmm? You can't really police that. But... The community at large is the police because, you know, there's societies. Society is determined either good or bad based on how the society and the people in the society actually funnel through the policing process of saying what is correct and what is incorrect. And creators have no, no power over that. They can create anything, but the fact, the factors are so broad that you have absolutely zero control over that except for the block button and verbal FUs. I would not recommend saying FU to your audience, but I would more be more tactful and saying like, okay, this person is being really mean. And then you tell your community about it. Your community will ultimately defend you, but then you would have an issue where you create a community that will defend you to their very last breath. That is not a good thing to have. Not with it, not without reason. Because your community can defend you from bad things. But if you do then go and do something wrong that you should not have done, your community will defend what you should not have done, right? And we see this all over the globe with various different creators. Like, look at Sneeko and his young sexists nowadays. I mean, that's 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 the world we live in. That's reality. You have to try to control your community. If you let your com community run amok to a point where they start doing bad things or start treating you poorly, I don't feel that's your fault. I more feel that it's the community's fault. Because what can one person do? You are their leader, but you must catch up to them. Because hey, Jesus was a leader. He died by the hands of his followers. Well, not followers per se, but people who worshipped him just in a different form, right? People who are really good leaders are not the ones that get up on stage and preach the gospel of a specific message that doesn't even have to be Christian. You know, it could be like the plight of the black man or the plight of indigenous people 
or even global warming, climate change. True leaders are the people who are vulnerable enough for their followers to understand that they are vulnerable, right? It's a yin and yang situation, a black and white style of issue. Because when you're vulnerable and your followers see that you're vulnerable, they either do one of two things. They either see you as pathetic and a loser, or they see you as someone who needs help. Now, whether that's the real case or not, I can safely say that being vulnerable to your audience is the most biggest thing to do to soften your audience to your own woes and the plight of other people. Because I've had my fair share of communities where I had a seat of power and I was like, hey, I'm not really feeling good right about now. And so they were like, yeah, sure, you can go take the day off. My community, I always tried to do my very best. My community knew it. However, I was also verbally honest about my issues. Like, if you hide your issues from the world, you can prevent your enemies from using that as fodder, but then you lose a, like, a genuine connection with your actual followers. That's what you have to balance as a person on a personal level. A creator on a personal level. Are you comfortable with your enemies knowing your backstory and what issues hit your buttons? I would say seek therapy first, then do content creation, or do content creation while seeking therapy and try to be as self have as much self esteem in yourself that while it won't necessarily not phase you because it never not phases anyone when they get stuff like that, or at least not sensitive people, but perhaps how to create a toxic positivity list, or maybe I can refer to that, how to create a community that is to positively toxic, or was it be toxically positive? I don't know how to phrase that. You know what I'm getting at, right? A non-toxic positivity community. There you go. Perhaps the best way to create that is just be vocal about your problems as you're starting out. I mean, don't go treading into trauma dumping, but when things get serious enough, actually just talk about it. Take the time to say, hi guys, and gals, and doggies, and kittens, and maybe even a turtle for whoever wants to watch as a turtle. I could have definitely phrased that better. I just wanted to talk to you today and say, and a well, first ask, how are you doing? If you don't want to see me, you know, rattle on about personal issues, you can leave if you want to. You know, section off that part and not put it in like a regular video. Now, that is an issue when it comes to live streaming and you're doing live streaming stuff and it's, you know, stuff like that. And there's no prerequisite warning because when you live stream, people go in directly where the live portion is at. So you can go in and the warning would be at the starting or even in the title itself. People will not notice. And they will go in and they will hear like, Well, my dog died today. And all this other stuff really just got on my nerves. Because, yeah, I've seen that. And uh, as someone who has a really had a really tough time accepting the loss of his own doggy, I started to see a lot of people talking about dead dogs. And that really hurt. Like a lot. I mean, heck, the new Pokemon game... The two new Pokemon games, when my pet died on March 30th, his name was Apollo, eight years we've been friends, in 2022, obviously I was playing Pokemon Legends, right? So what do I find when the Arcanine, the story about the Arcanine dying? Oh no. And then what do I get when I get the next Pokemon game? Oh no. A dying sick dog, which is very, uh, I don't like, uh, you know, things are sensitive at that moment, but I'm putting my own issues in the forefront because it's to enlighten about my perspective, right? It is up to the community person to acknowledge that there's dangerous territory here, and while I feel bad, I have to take a step back as a community person myself and realize they didn't mean it. My pain is my pain, and though it hurts, that's not their fault. It makes for captivating storytelling when dogs die. Now, if I wrote a memoir, I guess it'd be the best memoir, but I don't want to do that right now. <laughs>
And for those small number of people who are toxically positive or positively toxic, that is a hard phrase. A person who is toxic, posit, a person who has toxic positivity. I guess we're making it sound like an illness now. Probably because it is. Those are just narcissists. I mean, you have to be real. They're just narcissists. And they come out in the forefront when you disrespect their uh, sensitivities. It doesn't matter what their sens sensitivities are. I can say vanilla is better than chocolate. And then chocolate lovers can come out of the woodwork and say, You hate chocolate? You vanilla whore. Completely neglecting the fact that my favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip. You know, mint chocolate chip. I'm sure I rambled enough to where I forgot points I was trying to make, but I think you get it. Let's go. Was and how subhuman I felt after that, right after learning that there's a real chance I could die from this. Like, this all started because this VTuber, or I guess oh. V-Singer, because v -Singer. she disowned her own lore in the idea of VTubing now after she made this original take. Which, what? by the way, aren't you the freak that hates male VTuber? Whoa, 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 oh. whoa, 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 what? Are you the, whoa? I'm hated. I'm hated. Yay. But nobody recognizes me, though. Isn't it fun to be hated? Isn't it better with someone to hate? But hey, I can say I can carry my decree in a storm of lead. What can you say? Hey, what? This really struck a note for some of y'all, huh? <laughs> yeah, you can't pretend to be someone else. That's the whole point of VTubing though. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, sarcasm detected? Oh, okay. What? Next, we're gonna say video games are, aren't an escape from reality or books. Let's be real. A VTuber may use it to escape. The audience uses it to escape. It's really not complicated. I don't go watch Gura for her political takes of real life social issues. I watch it to escape from reality. <laughs> what That's I do not her brand. You should produce more music and less tweets. Okay. When you look into her account, you can kind of tell she's either a troll or she's a chronically online individual who uses social media and the internet itself to spread negativity and further push this narrative that the internet is just a toxic cesspool of humanity by being incredibly toxic herself. Hey everyone, Mari from the future uh. here. As I am editing this video, I did a little bit more digging on this person that I've been talking about. And as it turns out, what I had just said there was pretty much hitting the nail right on the head because her online uh -oh. presence really stems in a lot of propaganda and being incredibly toxic online. Ah, I cannot believe I actually guessed that just off of a couple of tweets on her profile. That's crazy. Well, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> this is probably why people don't like me and why it's really hard for me to make friends. Muting this, y'all really Wait, what just was that? up. This is probably why people don't like me and why it's really hard for me to make friends. Muting this, y'all really about you? just straight up quote retweeting to prove my point. A lot of VTuber fans are unhinged AF. Lamo. Interesting. This is a lot of tea. Oh my gosh. So going from what? this straight up to this, I think really puts into perspective on what Futakuchi was originally... Futakuchi, that's kind of a funny name. Uh. Um, was kind of getting at here. I think this was really taken out of context. I mean, she doesn't even know what K-Fob is. How are you a singer, but you don't know what a K-Fob is? What does V-Singer mean? Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I did well, as Well, you know what this channel is. It's about learning stuff. Goodbye, Markapu. Hello, C panel for my website. Uh oh. Say hello to cow emojis for a moment. Uh, V Singer. V Singer, formerly known as Vocaloid China Project and Vocanese. I knew I understood that one time. I I, I used to run a, a Vocaloid YouTube channel called Demo VD. Well, I technically still run it. I just haven't uploaded in a while because Vocaloid kind of died. V Singer? I'm sorry. Like, how can you call yourself a V Singer unless you're like a virtual singer? V Singer? V-Singer News. How can you call yourself a V-Singer? Yeah, this official account is the, uh, Chinese Vocaloids. What's a V-Singer? Or I'm just, uh, like, I I'm expecting it to be just simply Virtual Singer. Goodbye, X. Or Twitter. Because it's still Twitter.com. Like, I sing? Pain in every note. You just can't care about what they spoke. Am I a V-Singer? I don't know. 
That don't sound good. Which, if you don't know what kayfabe is, then I think that oh, kind of defeats the whole purpose of I didn't know what to become called. a VTuber or any online personality. I think this or is acting. really telling how so many people just coined the word VTuber because it's trendy and popular, but they don't really want to be a VTuber. Nothing wrong with that. Virtual just YouTuber? really puts it into perspective Isn't on that how that people don't really understand yeah, considering it's called VTuber, you know, virtual YouTuber, because, you know, Kazuna I and the one before that, I forgot which one it was. What was her name? What was her name? I forgot. Yeah, VTubers. YouTubers are on Twitch most of the time live streaming, right? Yeah, that's kind of an ironic thing, isn't it? <laughs> VTubing culture. Kind of weird to be posting this. Shortly after you posted some drama here. Extended video? Very interesting. You would oh. think that if you're someone who really believes the internet is well, a magnified reflection of reality, then you'd want to use your influence to make some sort of change, right? You're exactly what you're supposed Maybe? to be because you make terrible decisions. Oh. Damn. I don't really know because it seems like this person isn't really using their influence to spread any positive messages because like from what I can tell she's really enjoying the attention that this has been giving her based on her recent tweets. Oh. I want to talk about what her original tweet referred to which is this concept of reality in VTubing. What does it actually mean to be a VTuber? For some people it's just another way to be a faceless content creator but instead of having a little mascot you use an anime avatar to represent yourself and for others it's yeah. to create a character that you use as a way to make content in that character. You know. Or or, and this is the third option, create a character that causes you to release your inhibitions, right? Because, I hate to say it, do you remember when blackface was created? It was created by a Jewish person to say that Jewish people and black people have the same plight. Don't. I know what you're going to comment. Do not. No. Don't do it. You'll be better off for it. Trust me. Don't do it. I know what I said. I'm correct. I didn't say it was good to do that. I'm just saying, that's the story. That's the thing. Truth matters here. Truth matters. If you don't like truth, don't subscribe. I'm telling you, don't subscribe if you don't like truth. Normally when I make videos like these, it's usually because we're laughing or cringing at some goofy that we're seeing online. And yeah, this is pretty goofy to some extent. After yeah. watching this for a few days and seeing a lot of different people's perspective on this has made me start to wonder if this really is just some goofy bullshit seen on the X verb app or if this really is a problem that needs to be addressed. Like, how would you feel if you saw Gargura playing a game like Pokemon and all of a yeah. sudden she just starts talking to her chat about politics? That would mean that would be you her have brand. to either one, be very informed about whatever politics she's talking about and two, no. be very aware. No, because look at all these people. Hassan Piker doesn't know a single thing about what he's talking about. Sometimes you get a glimpse that he does know, but his chat will immediately back slap him across the across the mouthpiece. And then you have others that know exactly what they're talking about, but their community doesn't accept what they're saying. Because you have the people that say things to get attention, which the most eyes, and it doesn't have to be trolling. It just has to be like a certain political alignment. Do you know how many Democrats or Republicans don't actually believe in their quote-unquote politics, but they just do it to make money? The same is with actors. The same is with, like, workers of any nature. If you work and you don't like your work, yeah, sure, you're getting paid. And you might say with a happy smile at a McDonald's, like, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put on the creepy one. Yes. I love this job. I am so happy to serve you, Miss Karen. Yes, I am not thinking about punching you with a cup of hot, scalding coffee in my left hand, about to throw it on you as my right hook forcefully enters your skull. But you're secretly hating it. That there's like, you have to be honest. People, it's like a phrase from a song I once heard, which was Salting the Mind by Phineas. And in it, it says specifically, a wise man once told me that the only originality left is honesty. And yeah, it kind of is. If you're honest, you are the most original person in the known universe. Because your honesty reveals something about you as, a, as an individual that is unique. You cannot come from someone else unless they are lying. Got it? So it's important to be honest. Now, how honest you want to be is directly determined 
of how corporate you want to look. If you have values that you can, you know, shove away at certain points, say they are values that you can either agree with or disagree with based on the perspective or the situation given. Like, say I'm a Christian. Does that mean I support the crusade? Z because there were like eight. I'm not sure if that counter, uh, if the uh, child's crusade actually factors in, but you know, I'm not going to worry about that right now. That's a video for another day. But people in and of themselves are stereotypically stereotyping. If they see a group of people or leadership roles, they look at either the community speaking for the leader or the leader itself speaking for the community. Whoever speaks for either one, and especially the community, speaking for the leader, everyone outside of that community is going to view the leader as how bad or poorly the community acts. Because it's never the good parts of the community that people look at. Like, like people say, oh, the Bible affirms slavery. It's like, no, it never once said that. It's like, oh, but it tells people to have slaves. It's like, yeah, because that was the culture back in the day. Because, I don't know if you know this, a culture that stands out too much in a realm of those, of various cultures that surround them, like, from a stone's throw away, are usually the ones that get over overwritten. That's also why you never see slavery denounced in the New Testament either. Because 40% of Rome's citizenry were slaves. I kid you not. Up to 40%. Now, if the Bible was like, not, not the Bible, but New Testament letters were like, all right, let's denounce slavery enti entirely. You know what would happen to the New Testament? It wouldn't exist because Rome would have stomped it out. And though they stomped out a lot of the people who wrote the New Testament, it was not illegal to teach in church. What was illegal were to follow the teachings. Get it? There is a technicality there and a nuance that is important. Obviously, the community part would be the Christians adhering to the, the uh, letters and New Testament stuff, and the outsiders would be the overarching Roman Empire. The Roman Empire viewed those who did not do as atheists. The Roman Empire, like Marcus Aurelius, will call Christians atheists because that's how he viewed them. If you don't believe in our God, you are an atheist. It doesn't mean you are a quote-unquote theist in another religion. That didn't exist in the Roman Empire. But that's a story for another day. Here is a video. Where ...of where the majority of her fan base are from because like why would you talk about anything related to america if the majority of your audience is in europe like people from europe don't give a f about america like even me sitting here saying that means that i'm assuming you the person watching this is from america and well based off of my analytics it does tell me the majority of you are but my analytics also tell me that i have a lot of people from overseas so uh yeah. hello What's it like over there to have good health care? Like, I don't know. Personally, to me, I think that there is Long nothing lines. wrong with also, wanting I'm an to American. be a YouTuber to escape from reality. Because people play video games or read books or even play games like VR chat and D&D. This yeah. whole concept of fantasy is what makes it so appealing to so many of us, regardless if it's VTubing or not. In fact, I think that if you become a VTuber or an influencer and your content isn't focused around politics or real life social issues, then... It doesn't make sense to talk about that stuff because if you do, then doesn't that defeat the purpose of fantasy? It's one thing to have no, heartfelt moments in really. anime, right? You know, where they emulate things that could be happening in real life without directly saying it. Like, isn't the anime One Piece inspired by real world events and some of the characters are meant to represent different leaders or something like that? I don't know, uh, One Piece fans, tell me out here in the comment section with this because, like, even oh, no, that still One Piece. isn't directly addressing real life problems. Think of it as, like, looking through a filtered lens. So as a VTuber or a content creator, even if you wanted to talk about real life problems, then you're going to be talking about them through a filtered lens because it's your own perspective. And we all know people will comment on your perspective with their opinions. And that yeah. just causes a lot of unnecessary arguments when all people want to see from you is just silly little anime memes or something. I think this girl, she got it. She understands. She knows. Why does this fly around my face? And the best example would be the horror genre, right? What is more horrifying than reality? Without sp 
specifically stating a thing, you create a horror element that people will either agree with or disagree with on a moral standpoint. You know, like how which horror movies are a depiction of the patriarchy and women becoming free from the patriarchy without, you know, explicitly stating it. And though I don't really agree with how they are released from the patriarchy because, you know, good versus evil and then witches are always considered evil but only some are considered good because, you know, there's white witches on all this other stuff. And the whole idea about power corrupts and stuff like that. But then you also have to consider that in real life, people were told that they were witches when they were most definitely, in fact, not. And then barbecued alive on a church that said, God decrees it when God did not decree it. I don't remember him saying that, but okay. Either way, their perspective goes into the movies and into the writings, right? When you, in your own perspective, see something, you base it off of your own perspective. But they might have meant something else. Like, there was a video I saw with my girlfriend about how the Lion King did an oopsie and got, became anti-Semitism anti or became anti-Semite or something like that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because that's strange. You know, like, what? That means nothing. And then she goes into this whole issue, the person on the video, not my girlfriend, about how Lion King related to uh, Nazism of some kind. And I got really confused because the whole entire arguments fall apart because she didn't know what she was talking about. But then later in the video, she actually did contact some of the writers for Lion King because I think she's a big name somewhere. And they just simply wrote back, oh, those are just things that we threw on the wall. The meerkat says Jewish people were just based on how the, the actors that we got for the roles and riding around their, you know, comedic stances, not really intending for them to be Jewish. Because, I don't know if you know this, the, the basic premise of the argument for the video was that meerkats are an honor shame society. And because one actor, voice actor, was very clearly Jewish. That means the meerkats are Jewish representations. Excuse me? How many honor-shame societies are there nowadays? Is not America an honor-shame society? No. United States is. And each individual state might not be an honor-shame society. Because each individual state has a different society. Because a society is people agreeing. If you are outside of the society, you are in a different society. Got it? You see things based on your own perspective, your own lens. It's called the value of reinterpretation. And even then, you can interpret so incredibly wrong. Trust me, I'll watch a lot of stuff about the Bible. Do you know how many things I see that are culturally unsound back when it was written? Let's all just neglect the fact that where Noah was is an active floodplain and just say that the entire of the world was flooded. Not just that part of the earth. Or that it happened in multiple different time zones. Like a thousand years earlier than that. The Great Lakes were made. Oh boy. And about 500 years or so after Noah supposedly happened. A great Chinese flood ca was, was caused. That was actually confirmed to be true. However the story might be legend. As in the characters. But people based around the characters of actual people. Get it? And that's just from an historical standpoint. Forget politics. Oh no! You can't tell if somebody is actually lying or they're just actually stupid. You also can't tell if they're actually telling the truth and that what they believe is 100% what they believe. It could be 98% of what they believe. For all we know. Because being put on a pedestal basically shows your heart. It doesn't corrupt. Power doesn't always corrupt. It just power shows who their human is. And with Twitter and behind a screen, that's power. The power of privacy. If you have privacy, it shows your heart. Like literally. Some people are evil. Some people are rude. Some people are good natured. I, for one, thank you, the viewer, are a human being. If you're a dog, I'm sorry. I guess you're a dog. Because I don't really know who watches me. Sometimes, my dog will just sit on the, on the couch watching my own videos because it puts her to sleep. She's actively sleeping right now, as we speak. 
She's a chihuahua. Her name is Buttons. Maybe that's a little too much info. I don't care. But you deserve to be a happy, healthy, good, hu good natured human being as long as you don't become a full fledged psychopathic narcissist. Then you might need to get knocked down a peg, a t peg or two. Don't feel subhuman because, because you deserve to be respected. Not just by other people, but also yourself. And if you can't find a way to respect yourself, I hope that you can find a way to respect yourself. Because even if you don't respect yourself, eventually that will show in how you start to respect other people. If you hate yourself, you're going to start showing it in how you treat other people by, via projection. The first sign of projection is repression, right? That's my quote. I have never heard anyone say that. That's just what I've seen. If you repress these things in order to create a community of, oh, well, this is too bad of a subject. I might need to, you know, back off. Then that's a very bad situation when something like really, really important comes around. Like social issues. Okay, maybe that when it, when it delves into politics, that's not good. I mean, it could come down to if you had a bad day or not, and tomorrow you come to regret your words to someone else who you disagree with. Like, maybe you were too harsh because your day just was going horribly. Hey, I've been there, but that's why forgiveness exists, right? I will forgive you. Except, you know, you just can't go off being toxic all the time. You have to also forgive yourself and keep yourself in check. I experienced death a lot. I learned a lot about animal husbandry because of where I lived. Pregnancy, other stuff like that, giving birth. I did I would my parents never gave me the talk because I already knew about it. I wasn't had I didn't have to be taught. I just love nature. Look out in the look look out in the things and see like a bird pooping out an egg. It's like I wonder if my poops will create a living bird. I unfortunately thought that. Don't worry. I was five. But anyway, life is beautiful if you allow yourself to see the beauty. And sometimes creators, and not just creators, but people above and below that individual, convenes in their intricate relationships to either promote a sense of well-being in both yourself and nature, or a sense of nihilism and everything's just... Awful, sick, disgusting. Because, yeah, a lot of things are awful, sick, disgusting. But, okay, you see the birth of a baby. And nihilists, unfortunately, think, why would you even bring something into this world? Do you know they're going to suffer from climate change or something like that? Everything's garbage. You're going to treat that kid awful. You better just murder it now and then all this other stuff. Now, of course, not all nihilism, but nihilism Especially, but there is a brand called NATO Nihilism. That's what it's called. But there's beauty in the world. You just have to gravitate towards the content that you need to see. Because if you create a, a community of toxic positivity and then you get like 100% away from reality when you escape reality and you don't go into other content in between, like, yeah. I play Skyrim. I play Pokemon. That's hardly ever in actual reality, especially Genshin Impact. But lo and behold, I also do other stuff. I watch horror movies that have a cultural critique. I listen to music that can either be like about love, or I can listen to music that is highly political. Heck, I make p I make music that is about love, but also highly political. But the thing is, I dichotomize that into the songs about love being, uh, you know, lighthearted stuff. Love, today I walk alone To show what this means to me in my flow You know, radio-worthy stuff by Desire of the Wise. But Colony's Hope is a more metal, more grounded, like sometimes six feet underground, type of thing where all of my negative emotions and all of my most powerful emotions are released directly onto the music. If 
you listen to the lyrics of my songs on that one, on that project, you would understand directly because you can't mix two things together. It's kind of one of the reasons why Nickelback is hated so much because they do highly edgy music sometimes and then they do radio worthy pop stuff. Like, yeah, okay, I can see that, but then you get, get into the issue like, well, I want heavy stuff. I want inspirational lyrics, not pop garbage. And then you see both in the same package. I mean, of course, it depends exactly on if you care or not. <laughs> Some bands can pull it off very nicely. Other bands cannot. Why can they pull it off nicely? It's because of the context surrounding the words, the music and instrumentation itself. Like, if you sing about... Like, if your lyrics are indistinguishable from pop music, and then you put it in a metal song that is really, really gritty, and then you form your voice to be really, really gritty, and you sing it in such a style that conveys an entirely different emotion than what you would get from a generic pop radio song, then that would be, that would be ingenious. Because, I don't know if you know this, it is! And it, if you can pull it off, it's great. Like, really, really great. Like, if today was your last day, you might look at this graph and see that you had your ups and downs. But overall, if you're an American, you probably had an up for the most of the time. Even when it was really down. Because there's still, there are still slaves in this world. Slavery still exists. And I've heard stories, I've read stories that would really, really break your heart. And I uh, don't like talking about it. Even though I will at one point. That doesn't mean your pain doesn't have worth. Your pain has worth. Your pain has its worth. Don't cause your pain will happen. As long as you use that pain to funnel it into something productive. To build rather than to destroy. Now there are times where you have to use your pain to deconstruct and then reconstruct, but you have to focus on the reconstruction after you deconstruct things, right? Else the deconstruct is destroy, right? The bad parts about yourself and the things you've learned can help other people, but being also like a person who has a brand who doesn't talk about politics or dividing factors, and the most dividing factor of your community is whether Mori Calliope is better than Gar Guagura or the vice versa, then that's your brand, that's your prerogative. But you also don't really form meaningful community relationships that way. I mean, friends are friends for life. And I know your community is not your friends, but what is a community for? Else you just use your community for your own personal mental health with people, you know, cheering around you. And donating money to your cause. To your face. I'm sorry, I want a community that will help me see different perspectives. Help me see things that I don't know about myself. But also a community that is humble enough to realize that, hey, sometimes we might disagree. And if I say something and then I'm proven right, you don't say I'm the bad guy. Because a lot of people do that. And I freaking hate it. But I forgive. Now, unless I did something like really, really terrible, like within action and not just opinion, unless it's like a Daniel Hakikachu thing. If you don't know, Daniel Hakikachu is a Islamic apologist or Dawahist, I guess. And he did a thing with inspiring philosophy, a debate face to face about if child marriage is okay or not. So, Daniel Hakikachu said, sure, as long as the parents agree to it, it can be done as early as 11 months old. Could a man have a marriage to a five-year-old consummated if she started precocious puberty? Or it shows no. it goes as early as 11 months. If she starts showing signs of physical maturity, then yes, that's permissible. As I so the parents have oversight, and sometimes a qadi or a judge can have oversight if the guardians are not capable. It's so bad. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Now see, that would be something to criticize me heavily for if I agreed with it, which I vehemently do not. Also, I should probably mention I'm not privy to being anxious about name dropping. 
That is not in my prerogative. I will sufficiently name drop whoever's name comes to my mind. Unless it's like revealing private info. But I want to be the best person I can be. And if I can be the best person I can be, the only way is, heck, even the Bible says it. You find the face of God in the community you surround yourself with. Will it be the true God or the fake ones? And I know I'm bringing up Christianity a lot. Maybe it's because that's my, that's my shtick. My, 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 my stick. My stick in the mud. <laughs> I think the dark truth about VTubing is that there are so many people who are using the words VTuber and VTubing as a way to trend hop and gain popularity without actually wanting to be a VTuber. Like the people who are just yeah. online personalities or faceless content creators using an anime avatar are not really VTubers. They're just borrowing the term and diluting its meaning, which is why so many corporate VTuber fans or anime fans in general don't take the indie VTubing community seriously. And it's kind of sad because over the past three years, the word VTuber has really changed in its meaning. And now whenever I meet a new VTuber, I have to stop and ask myself if this person really is a VTuber or if they're just a faceless content creator that isn't going to take their job that seriously. Oh, hold on a second. I'm a, f a faceless content creator, probably not a, a VTuber with lore, although I'm trying to make one with lore. Maybe an alternate universe of myself since I've already kind of made myself publicly known as myself and myself alone. I am what I am and I am what I am. Great, Philosopher Popeye, we salute thee. <laughs> but I take my job very seriously, sometimes, because what I'm serious about is wanting to be a shining beacon of light for other people. Like you see all these content creators doing what they love to do, but also they're not really challenging people. I mean, yeah, you have to challenge yourself in order to actually be a better human being. You can't just spontaneously wake up and be better. You have to actually put in the work. And possibly, perhaps, there are room enough to where I can, and people like me, can sit in the VTuber space. Because, you know, I only post to YouTube, not Twitch. Because VTubing went from a niche into a full-fledged genre. Now, essentially, fly. And as long as you're doing something good with your time and your life, whether it's helping other people or helping yourself, because like I said, I've been posting to Rejoice Box Gaming for years. I don't have anything to show for it. And I've uploaded weekly until I stopped. Now my most recent video that was uploaded three days ago as one view, and that was me. But I still enjoy doing it. I still enjoy making content for myself, even if nobody wants to see it. Now it depends. Do you have a big giant community where you just do it for yourself and only for yourself? Or do you have a counterbalance or do you give your entirety over to your community? The counterbalance is the most productive part. If you give everything over to your community, your mental health suffers greatly. But if you do it for only yourself, your community suffers greatly. Trust me, I've learned that. Now you might be thinking, Mari, why are you making a video on this and addressing this? Isn't this hypocritical for you to be breaking the fourth wall to talk about this? What about my silly stinky cat girl? Like, what is all this about? And, uh, um, I've always been like this? Question mark? Listen, I'm just a figment of your dreams, okay? So, I see some oh no. of the stuff you go through every day. And I Does also that mean see you're the in my closet? takes you see online. Which means, whatever happens here in the dream realm is going to be influenced somewhat from the outside of here, so to say. Because that's what you and everyone else Wait, bring what was that? outside of here, so to say. Because Turtwig that's fans. what you and everyone else brings in here when you come visit me, and I see that. So I created this world, this space, where some of that is allowed and can be discussed to some extent. This was a conscious yeah. decision on my end when I first became a VTuber, but if I was originally, let's say, a music idol VTuber, and my entire life or aspirations was to make music and bring joy to people, then it wouldn't make sense for me to be making videos like this and talking about triggering topics like that i don't know i think i've been ranting about this long enough well yeah but also consider me i want to be a philosopher youtuber you can't be a philosopher youtuber or vtuber for that matter without delving into philosophy philosophy is a hard hitting thing you have multiple different dichotomies and ways of living and the options that disagree and uh, have subsects into that in very intricate ways, that's really tough to navigate without getting political, historical, religious. And I can make myself a philosopher 
because technically, even though I don't have a degree in philosophy, I can tussle around with the best of them. I disagree with Stoicism, even though I practiced Stoicism a lot back in the day. But then I come to learn that uh, it has some very serious flaws, and I'm about to make a video on that. Like, imagine. Like the new, uh, let's see, Like a Dragon thing, where there was a VTuber who was talking about the news. You can't talk about the news as a VTuber, or can you? I don't know. Possibly, VTuber means virtual YouTuber, or virtual content creator. Behind a mask, I mean, what is a PNG tuber? It's a person talking behind a PNG. I used to be a PNG tuber without even knowing it, but I've never had a face. Not on this place. I don't- I, I want my physical body to be private because, I don't know, maybe you could look into a public registry and find something there. I don't have a record. It's just all of your information is somewhere on the web. It's just, it's just a fact of the matter. Somebody's gonna find something and it would be better if you knew not where I was or what I looked like. Because think about Markiplier, PewDiePie, and tons and tons of other high-ranking individuals on YouTube who they go out into the public and they see people say, Hey, you're this person I know from online! And they say, Can I get an autograph? I'm like, I was, I'm just in the, in the grocery store to buy some crackers. Can you show me where the crackers are? It's like, sure, on the third aisle. After the signage. <laughs> see what I mean? that my medicine is starting to wear off so i'm getting a headache now do you think it's okay for vtubers to not talk about real life issues or do you think as part of being an influencer it's our job to constantly remind you about the outside world let me know Neither. your thoughts in the comments because i'd like to have a discussion about it and hear from your perspective since you know you're the viewer of this show so yeah Whatever it is that you want to see is what you're going to get because this channel and my existence are pretty much here for you and your entertainment. So what would you like? Anyways, I'm going to go lay down now. Thanks for listening to me and I hope I can listen to you too. Bye bye. Oh, you're welcome. Well, wasn't that just a nice video? Really thought provoking. But you can't always like when, when, a, com when a creator does something all the time, like especially like it's, if, it's, if it's like toxic and you get inundated with people who are really toxic. Like, if you talk about politics, you're you're going to delve into toxic stuff. Stuff you don't agree with. And people will lambast you for talking about stuff that you don't agree with. And they will also lambast you for talk not talking about stuff that they agree with. Lambashing is lambashing. You just can't let yourself be bullied that well. Because, yeah, I'm a very hard person to bully. It's like, you tell me, I hate you, stupid. And I say, Aw, you hate me. Oh, that's so great. At least you acknowledge my presence unlike everybody else in my life. Not that I believe that or that's actually true. But yeah, I do admit I'm stupid. But how stupid must you be to actually comment that on this video right now? At least I admit my stupidity. Mr. Wannabe Einstein. Ha! Get mad. Become my slave. Don't you know that if anyone makes you angry and can influence your emotions with any form of breath, that just simply means you have given yourself over to being subjugated. That's your fault. I can be a very evil human being, you know that? <laughs> but hey, call me evil. It's fine. Like, if you, like, throw out false accusations, that's, that'd be kind of different. Like, you kicked a puppy off a bridge. It's like, no, I didn't. That's a, that's a fib. You know it. You don't know what my feet look like. I could be amputated. You don't know. Well, technically, if I was amputated, I could still technically kick something off a bridge. I just throw a shoe at it, go, boop, boop. But if you do something, like say something that is subjective, like, oh, you demos a white supremacist. It's like, okay, prove that, I guess. That's a pretty high accusation and a word that has been abused and abused over the course of decades to where it means absolutely nothing anymore. To the point where if even if I was, nobody would care. It doesn't have to matter that I hate white supremacists and everything they stood for or stand for. It doesn't have to matter that I hate black supremacists and what everything they stand for. I mean, any sort of racial supremacy, cultural supremacy, I'm kind of against. That's just me. But hey, that is a subjective term and your terminology is yours. Your definitions are yours. I think it's pretty apparent that in Western culture, 
the dictionary has two forms of it, of itself. There is the collegiate version. Did I say virgin? There is the collegiate version, which is notoriously incorrect. And then there is the reality version, which is notoriously underutilized. A lot of the toxic people definitely do need a dictionary for their for their birthday, Christmas, Easter, I don't know what else, uh, Thanksgiving even. Like, just, just gift a dictionary to them on a daily basis, and they will eventually get it. But then you get dictionaries changing definitions, because, you know, they do that. So this has been your favorite online neighborhood philosopher, Demosthenes Alethea. Ah, I feel tired. It, I, I recorded this for two hours. You're not seeing two hours of this content. You hear me? Oh, man. I'll ramble too much. Please forgive me. How did I make a 14-minute video, which I still haven't finished completely? Da, 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 da. Yeah, there's nothing else. Into two hours. Hey, at least I'm not Sniper Wolf. Hey, you, you have to agree with me, and you have to click the like button because I'm not Sniper Wolf. Ha. 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 <laughs> and if you want to support a new culture starting out, we want, we're want we about to make a culture called Rejoice Box Interactive. I'm starting a Discord and all this other stuff. And while the Discord is almost completely finished, the website is not. And so if you want to support that, where we're making a playground where some people, especially VTubers, like, I, I want it to be like a VTuber place, but not be like an agency. It's like... Agencies are just multi-channel networks, right? But That's gross. That's sick. That's corporatist. Even though your favorite VTubers might actually be from those channels, multi-channel networks and agencies, I'm not attacking them, and I'm not technically attacking the agencies either. They're businesses. That's how they roll. But I, in my philosophy, am more laissez-faire, or shall I say more individualist. I want Rejoice Box Interactive to be a platform where a VTuber can come up, learn new things, and do things outside of creating simple video content or live streams. Like, I know friends who want to be VTubers. They create music. I am a musician. No, I can't say that. All of my music I create is on FL Studio. But I have two bands, which are solely me. Also books, also games, video games. I'm actually making some video games. They're just visual novels right now, but I am making a clicker game, but that'll be later. This isn't the point of the video. Why am I on this track? I put this at the end of the video. I love you. Catch it next time. Blech.